Merry Christmas. <laughs> Welcome to worship this evening. We are glad that you are all here and able to join us, whether that's in person or online. It is great to see everyone here and to be able to worship together. I am Pastor Amber, and this is Prince of Peace Lutheran Church. We are glad to be together. A couple of quick notes for you. Um, one, due to COVID, of course, uh, we've got the N95 masks available if you would like one. Um, they are available from our ushers. Um, you can flag one of them down if you have need of that or would like to have that. Um, also, uh, it's, it may get a little chilly in here. We wish it didn't, but um, we do have some of the windows open and we'll keep them open to kind of keep the airflow going. Um, so if you need your coat, feel free, grab your coat, please. Um, I don't want you cold in here, we just need to keep some airflow going. Um, also, if you didn't get a candle, now would be the moment to flag down an usher. Anybody still missing candles? Okay, cool. They did their job well then. <laughs> um, also, there will be communion later in this service. You are welcome to come forward to receive communion. Um, if you would rather remain in your seats or use uh, pre-packaged communion uh, things, those are available on the, in the back of the welcome space if you want to grab one of those if you're uh, more comfortable that way. And if you're joining us online, you too are welcome to join us for communion. You uh, just need to grab some bread and wine or whatever you have that's closest to those things um, in your home for later in the service. I think that's everything is, oh, I did forget one thing, I knew it. Um, thank you if you were one of the people who helped to decorate our space with the poinsettias. They look beautiful, they're a wonderful addition. Um, if you uh, ordered poinsettias and um, remember that, you can take them home <laughs> at the end of the service. If you don't remember if you ordered poinsettias, there's a nice list there of everyone who did and what you ordered, so um, be sure to check that. We just ask that you leave the little plastic bottom because uh, we reuse those from year to year. And I think you'll find next to each uh, setup, there's some of the plastic sheets to take your points at home with so they don't die in your car on the way to your house in the cold. Um, so do remember your points at the end of the service, but they're beautiful and we love having them here. Now I think that's everything. Um, so I invite you to join me in the words of our purpose statement. These are the words that um, through the, the years we have claimed as our own, as who God has called us to be as a people of faith. Um, and so I invite you to join me in saying those together. Claimed by grace, we seek to welcome all, worship joyfully, grow spiritually, and share God's love. We begin with, O come all ye faithful. Please stand.
the newborn light. With Mary, we will ponder these things in our hearts. Lift up your hearts in thanksgiving, for a child, the child, has been born. His name will be blessed among all the earth. Come, our wait is finished. Let us worship the newborn king. Continue with the lighting of our advent. Service had trouble with that one too. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And continue with angels we have heard on that.
daughter, I would leave it her. <laughs> She's apparently very upset I haven't done it yet. Our first reading today is from Isaiah. And the people of Israel have been taken into exile. They've seen their lives destroyed, their leadership removed, and their temple demolished. And so the prophecy that we're going to hear from Isaiah is really the promise of some incredible things to come. It's the hope of the people, a restoration of everything they have lost, the best things of their lives all brought together as the talk about return, return to Israel, to their own leadership, to their homes and families, and to a relationship with God. So listen. You can listen to me then. Oh, we do. Okay. Our second reading points us ahead to Jesus' death and resurrection. But it's also about the life of that baby, the way Jesus loved the world, the way he loves each of us, the fact that that love led him to die so our sins would be forgiven. Tonight we celebrate the beginning of the story, of something incredible. We celebrate the love of God in the form of Jesus, our hope and our salvation. This is a reading from Titus. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us. Not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, this spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The story of Jesus' birth is so familiar to us that sometimes we let it wash over us without really hearing it without hearing it with fresh ears. And so I invite you tonight to hear the story of Jesus' birth and try and listen to it as if you've never heard it before and see how it hits you in maybe a different way. This is the Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire 
Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and who was expecting a baby. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This, this will be a sign for you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor. When the angels had left them, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened that the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, which was just as they had been told. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is What Child Is This?
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So yesterday I did a little cookie decorating. And uh, we store bought the cookies because we ran out of time. But I decorated some cookies and I, I made them look like, uh, I wanted it to look like a Christmas ball. So, so this was my first cookie. I, I admit I am not artistically gifted. But this is my cookie. And I said, wow, that's lovely-ish. Um, and, and, then, and then I made a different cookie. I made this cookie. It looks better, doesn't it? The sprinkles really help. The sprinkles kind of cover up the mistakes. They kind of make it look a little nicer, gives a little depth, a little glitz, a little glamour, right? Definitely looks better than the first one. Still no work of art, I admit. But definitely better than the first one. But I do have to confess something. This cookie looks great. It's wonderful. And all of the rough spots are smoothed out, and the, 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 the sprinkles really help. But honestly, I kind of like my cookies better without the sprinkles on them. I kind of like my cookies like this. They, they to me, they taste better. I don't know. Maybe it's just the crunchy parts. I don't know. But, but it tastes just as good, doesn't it? But this one sure looks a lot nicer. I'm going to leave these here so we can kind of see them throughout the sermon time. You can enjoy my artwork. <laughs> the way that we add sprinkles to cookies is also kind of the way we tell stories and remember them. How often do we kind of blur the truth just a little bit, even for ourselves, when it comes to our past? How often, you know, we tell those stories and we hang on to the good parts. We add and we embellish them over time a little bit, and we slowly kind of weed out the messy parts, the parts that don't make us look so good, the stuff we kind of want to forget, or the things we wish had never happened in the first place. rough edges, the disappointments, it's all kind of been embellished a little bit. Now, the Christmas story gets a lot of sprinkles. We tell the story every year, again and again. So imagine this beautiful cookie with 2,000 years worth of sprinkles. We remember the story, we read the story, we act out the story, we listen to the story, we sing the story, we connect to it, we get caught up in it over and over and over again. And it's a wonderful story. We talk about the, the tiring yet great trip of Mary and Joseph, followed by overworked inns, but very kind innkeepers. We talk about a baby born in a stable and sweet smelling hay. We talk about a quiet night and a peaceful sleeping baby. We talk about the wonder of the shepherds and the amazing appearance of the angels. We talk about how the word is spread to all the world. But what we don't talk about is the underlying messiness of the story. We don't talk about the fact that Mary and Joseph are forced to travel this late in her pregnancy because of the greed and rivalry of political leaders. We don't talk about the fact that Mary is an unwed teenage mother. And she's alone in that new role because she's an outcast in her community. We don't talk about how this stain on Mary and Joseph's reputation may have affected their ability to find a place to stay even in a town filled with relatives. And even if that isn't true, even if her relatives, or Joseph's relatives, do accept them, then somehow there still isn't a normal guest room for this very pregnant mother anywhere in town. And then there are the shepherds. We like to hear their invitation to this story as God's invitation to the everyday person. The shepherds weren't everyday people. They were on the fringes of society too. They were outcasts themselves. 
They were seen as scoundrels and liars, people who didn't and couldn't practice their faith. And so they must be people without any morals at all. They weren't trusted. And they couldn't be a legal witness in a court of law because of the stereotypes. Their role as kind of the first witnesses of Jesus' birth is actually kind of laughable. Their word was tainted before it ever came out of their mouths just by the nature of their profession. The Christmas story is full of difficult, messy realities that we kind of try to avoid a little bit. We'd rather have the, the sprinkled version that keeps, keeps us staring in awe at the baby Jesus rather than the harsher, not quite so glamorous truth. The same is true in our lives. How often do we ignore the hard reminders that, about our world and our lives not being perfect, not being beautifully sprinkled cookies? How often do we walk around with blinders on so we don't see the suffering of the poor or the greed of the ultra-rich? How often do we stop ourselves from seeing the flaws and cracks in our own worldview, even when others try to point them out to us? How often do we hide from difficult conversations, avoid those who make us uncomfortable, and run from uncertainty? How often do we refuse to acknowledge our own feelings of inadequacy and pain and loss, or fail to recognize those feelings in other people? How often is the plain icing on our cookies just not good enough, even when it's possible? when it's absolutely more truthful and possibly more tasty. It's so easy to sprinkle the cookies and make them look great rather than deal with the messy realities we live with. The sprinkles keep us from seeing our sin. The sin that keeps us from living our lives right and loving others and acknowledging the imperfections that haunt us. One of the biggest things that I think we sprinkle over in the Christmas story is that Jesus is born in a stable. God comes to earth. God is born into the flesh among animals. It doesn't get much humbler than that. It doesn't get much messier than that. We think about silent nights and sweet-smelling hay and no crying. We leave out the snuffing and the pawing and the braying and the mooing and the bawing. We forget that stables are not safe, sanitary places. The smell of manure lightly wafted over the whole experience. And the animal's half-eaten dinner plate becomes the place to put the baby down. The Son of God. It was likely dirty, smelly, loud, and possibly drafty and cold. And that's the way that the creator of the universe, the Lord of all, chose to enter the world in the midst of the stable's mess. Not to mention the political, socioeconomic difficulties of the time or the less than status of Jesus' family or the inhospitality, inhospitality of the community or the unreliable bearers of the story of his birth announcement. Jesus' birth is not perfect or glitzy or glamorous. Instead, it's hard and messy and real. And that is what we celebrate tonight. We celebrate that God comes to us. Not when we have it all together, we're all figured out, not when our cookies are well and beautifully sprinkled. But God comes to us in our sprinkle-free, untidy, sinful lives. He comes as a fragile, messy baby himself. Jesus is called Emmanuel by the prophet Isaiah. It's a title that means simply God with us. God close to us when we're doing well and when we're at our worst. 
God by our side when we don't know what to do next or when we can't wait to make that change. God near us when everything seems lost and when we're filled with excitement we can hardly contain ourselves. God with us in every situation in every mess, and in every joy. God, in the midst of the ugly, the unjust, and oppressive places of our world. God, in the hard and difficult times of our lives. God, in the mess we find ourselves in so often. God with us, always. But Jesus comes not just to be with us, not just to walk beside us in our mess, Jesus comes to free us from the mess. Jesus comes to save us from our sins, to return us to the kind of people that God intended us to be when he created us, to bring us back into relationship with God, to ultimately rework the icing completely on our cookies. So there's no need to hide any flaws with sprinkles. So tonight, we celebrate the birth of a baby, a tiny, messy human who is also the Son of God and Emmanuel. God came to a smelly stable and entered the mess of the world. God who sees past our sprinkle-encrusted embellishments and loves us anyway. God who is with us in the truth of our lives, both good and bad. God who saves us and brings us home to a mess-free, sprinkle-free existence with God. Tonight, we celebrate, celebrate the birth of Jesus and with that, the truth of God's love for us. On this night, we celebrate the birth of a baby, the naked cry of a human soul entering the world for the first time. In this way, God comes to us deliberately vulnerable. In response to this awesome gift, I invite you to stand as we confess our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good news of great joy, light, and life, grace, and peace be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to take a moment to share a sign of peace with those around you.
We worship God in many ways, both here at church and in our everyday lives. And one of the ways that we worship God is by giving of what we have been given. If one of the places that you choose to give is to Prince of Peace, we thank you for that. If you would like, you can leave your offering in the plate on your way out the door tonight. You can also give through our website or through the Vanco mobile app if you would choose to do that. And I thank you for the support that you give to all the many ministries of Prince of Peace and our larger community. Let us pray. God is with us. You came as a baby to a manger. You slept on straw and greeted shepherds. You come again in bread and wine. Remind us how good you are. That's the ordinary things. Help us to bless the lives of others and the strength of your own. Everyone is welcome at this table. God is the one who sets this table, who fills it, and invites us all to it. You all have been gathered here um, this night in this place, and so you are the church in this moment, and you are welcome and invited to the table. God welcomes you. At the right time, you'll be invited to come forward down the center aisle. You can receive a piece of bread in your hands and hear the words, the body of Christ given for you. Then you can choose from the tray either red wine or white grape juice. Hear the words, the blood of Christ shed for you. After you've uh, drank your wine or your grape juice, you can uh, place the empty cup in the basket on the way back to your seat by the side of If you would like or have need of gluten-free elements, that is also available. Just let me know um, or the, let the server know as you come forward if that is something you like, um, and we'll get that for you. We continue with the dialogue for communion. God promised to save God's world. God sent the prophets to remind them of the covenant of trust and love. In the fullness of time, God's promise became incarnate in the life of Mary. Those who were the least and the lost received good news. We are called to open our hearts, spirits, and minds to God's good news. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou art the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let every heart receive your Savior.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. On this night, O God, you gave us Christ the Son to save us. As you sent the one foretold, send us now with good news to all people. Let the gladness of this feast have no end, as we share with others the joy that fills us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to grab your candle. As we do this, only to tip the unlit candle. So once your candle is lit, it stays upright. But tip the unlit candle, and as you pass the light to your neighbor, um, I invite you to say to them, Jesus is the light of the world.
this place, go knowing that you are saved by grace. You are justified, you are forgiven, you are sought out, beloved, hidden in Christ, and made to the glory of God. You are known, you are never forsaken, you are held in the palm of God's hand, you are loved. May the peace and power of our God be with us until we gather again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to blow out your candles. We sing our final hymn, Joy to the World. Please stand. 